Hey everyone, Anthony here. I just wanted to uh, excuse my office. I moved into this house like two months ago, which makes this look really bad, but I'm building the downstairs and an office and everything. So all my computer stuff is just like laying around or whatever. So uh, I see a lot of questions or whatever on the subreddit, uh, how to add validators to uh, uh, where, where are we? How to add validators to Prism for Ethereum. So these are the commands right here that I wrote down and uh, I'll link them in the description so you guys have them to copy and paste and whatever. So basically you're stopping all of the uh, processes. So you're stopping Geth, stopping uh, the Prism Beacon client, stopping the Prism validator, stopping the Prism slasher. And this is going off of uh, Sommer's uh, guide to set up Ethereum validator with uh, Prism. So these names are the names that you set. Uh, maybe you named the Prism Slasher differently. Maybe you're not running the Prism Slasher and don't need to do this. Uh, maybe you name, didn't name it Prism Validator, uh, but these are names that you set. So uh, if you followed Sommer's guide, these are the names that uh, Summer's Guide uh, named them. So uh, as long as you didn't change the names, this will be okay. Uh, additionally, I do not believe you have to stop the services to create new validator keys. Uh, I've done it without stopping the validator services from running and everything was created fine. Uh, however, when I do deposit, uh, I after I'm done with all this and I do deposit, I reboot the computer just for peace of mind pretty much to make sure everything's just started fresh, uh, just to restart everything. Uh, so next uh, you're gonna CD, so change directory to the home directory, then uh, to the F2 deposit uh, CLI. So that's just the uh, interface or the program that you're working with. So now, uh, this command here, move validator keys, uh, validator keys, and then this weird thing here. Uh, this pretty much uh, just changes the name of the validator, validator keys folder to validator keys, validator underscore keys, validator, and then this the current date. So all it's doing is renaming an existing folder to add a date at the end of it so that there's no conflicts when you do this next command, because this next command is going to create a uh, validator keys folder. So uh, I don't know what would happen if you didn't rename uh, this stuff. Uh, give me a second to catch my breath and my train of thought. So it's possible, I guess, that when you run this command, uh, instead of create, maybe there won't be a conflict and it'll just put the new keys into the existing folder. Uh, I don't know, but it was recommended to me like many months ago to rename the validator keys folder and uh, it's just simpler and you can keep track of everything better. Let me open up my validator and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so this is the folder where all the validator keys and whatever are. This is what mine looks like because uh, these are different dates that I've added validators to my uh, uh, thing. But see F2 uh, deposit CLI, uh, and then I guess this deposit would be the program that you're working with. Yeah, dot slash deposit uh, right here. So that just that's just the program that runs all these commands. Uh, so then when you run this command, it'll create a folder that is just called validator underscore keys, and that will have your deposit data data. Uh, file in it. And then for this one, I created two keys, uh, 17 and 18. Uh, so there's the two key stores for uh, the public keys and all the information that you need to uh, make a validator. All right. So the next command dot slash deposit existing mnemonic. So uh, that'll say use your existing mnemonic. Uh, and basically what that does is uh, so your mnemonic, you can kind of say is like a private key and all the validators are generated off of that one private key. So 
Uh, so this one existing mnemonic, you can kind of maybe think of it like a password to an account that creates your validators, I guess. Uh, oh, maybe I should explain that better. Basically, you have a private key and all your uh, a private key or a maybe private. I think private key is right. Basically, you have like a private key and all your validators are generated based off that private key. So when you have like validator one is based off of that private key and then the next iteration validator two is based off that private key. So uh, so this next part of this command validator start index would be, well, say you're running two validators uh, right now and you want to create one more. Well, then you'll do validator start index two because you're starting at position two and number of validators one. Uh, so you'll be creating one more validator. So it's just uh, going straight down the line uh, <clears throat> for the index or for generating keys. Hopefully that makes sense and I explained that. Okay, I feel like I didn't. And then chain mainnet just says that you're making the keys on, on the mainnet. Uh, I'll run that command and show you. During this command, it wants you to input your passwords as well. So it'll ask you to input your uh, existing mnemonic, which is like the, I don't remember how many words it is, but like 16 word mnemonic. Uh, that was generated when you set up your prism validator and everything like that. And then it'll also ask you uh, for your wallet password. I think your wallet password, either your prism password or your wallet password, I get them confused. They're two different passwords. Uh, it'll ask you for one of those passwords when you uh, make this command. So next, after you created these keys, you have to import them into your... Uh, Prism wallet uh, so that they can be used as addresses for the Prism validator service. So the Prism validator needs to have these keys imported into it uh, to, to be able to, to use them to validate with uh, or to use them as validators. So CD change directory user local bin. So that's just, uh, just to give you guys a visualization, I guess. So uh, where are we? Uh, user local bin. Uh, and then you'll see your, this is where your beacon chain slasher and validator uh, run from. So you're changing to that directory and then sudo. So uh, like privileged access or whatever. Uh, so sudo and then you'll enter your root password which is the password you use to log into your computer after you run this command so sudo validate your accounts import and then keys directory uh home eth deposit uh thing validator keys so this command is pointing is this line is telling this command where the validator keys are located so when you run this command, I said that it creates a validator keys folder. That's the validator keys folder. So it's telling uh, this command where the validator keys are. And then this command wallet directory uh, var lib prism validator is telling uh, it where the validator is to add the keys to. So you're importing the new keys that you just created. And then this next command uh, is an accounts list command. Uh, and what that does is um, uh, it, it prints a list in terminal of all the accounts that uh, the Prism validator has imported to it. So you want to make sure that, uh, that the accounts that you just added are in the list uh, so that you know that they're added properly. And what I do with that, uh, basically... Uh, see where where we go here if you right click on your key store file and open up with text editor it'll show you the public key for the validator so i just match that public key to what's printed in the accounts list uh and as long as 
the key matches with this text editor to what's showing in accounts list, then uh, I know that they're imported. There's other ways of doing it as well. That's just the quick way that, that I do it. So then the final step for this is, uh, is actually pretty simple and straightforward. You just follow the regular instructions on how to deposit uh, Ethereum into your validator account. So you guys have done this already, but uh, when you first set up your validator, but you basically just uh, go to the uh, go to the launchpad uh, dot Ethereum dot org thing, the F two launchpad, and you click through all these. Uh, menus because they don't uh, matter at all. And uh, none of this, I don't think any of this matters either that you're, you, I guess maybe, yeah, you definitely have to select Prism, but I don't know if you have to select Geth. So then you select the number of validators. So uh, for this example, we'll use two. I uh, scroll all the way down select this. Uh, then we take the uh, deposit the deposit file and upload it here. Continue and uh, we'll select MetaMask. Let me just uh, go off screen for a minute. Let me uh, do this off screen for a minute just in case there's any private information that shows up. So I guess I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. You have to have MetaMask installed in Firefox uh, for this to work. So you have to have MetaMask installed and uh, you have to have the wallet that you're depositing funds to needs to be in MetaMask. You can do it from a different wallet if you want. Uh, this is just the way that, uh, that I do it. Uh, so we're going to be depositing from MetaMask. So we'll just select MetaMask here. And then uh, it, right now it says I don't have enough. So uh, cryptocurrency in the wallet that I have selected, but you'll just uh, follow the uh, prompts here and it'll, uh, MetaMask will pop up uh, to uh, tell you to deposit uh, to the F2 deposit contract. Uh, so that's, that's it. Before I go, I forgot one more thing. So these, after we're said and done with everything, I renamed the validator keys uh, folder to validator keys underscore, and then I put the date uh, that I created them. Uh, and then I take this folder and I back it up. So I'm backing up the deposit and the key store folders to uh, to another computer. Uh, I, I don't think that's really necessary to back up these uh, files because you can recreate them using the uh, existing mnemonic uh, command that we used previously in this uh, video. Uh, so I think I'm okay not to back them up, but that's just my process and uh, and I end up I end up backing them up. Hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. Uh, if it was, uh, consider uh, donating to me. There's uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin addresses in the description. You don't have to, it's totally optional. Uh, this video is also monetized. Usually I really only ask for donations if it's a video that I think is going to be taken down and demonetized. Uh, this video is probably not going to make much money or get whatever, uh, or, uh, won't get a lot of attention. Uh, so it probably won't make much money, but, uh, that's okay. The video is still monetized and that's kind of like the free market. Um, it's my choice to make a video that, uh, isn't super popular and won't make me a lot of money. So uh, that, that's on me if it doesn't make money. Like it's not on you guys to to make me money, I guess. Uh, all right, uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Take care, thank you, and uh, goodbye. Mm -hmm.